Hey everyone, and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna do things a little bit different. We've been doing our breakups and makeups lately, which I've been enjoying so much, but I don't really get the opportunity to talk about the products that I've been loving in those videos because we're already multitasking so much. So I figured today we could talk about my staple products right now, which does change out quite often because I am always using different products. But I do generally have like a set routine that I know are all of my favorite products. And there's definitely some products in here that I've been using for years that I know will never do me wrong. So I wanted to share that with you today. And also I do have a shirt on. I feel like it looks like I don't because my hair is blending into it, but I do have a shirt on. But I just wanted to go from start to finish, starting with my morning skincare and really give you all the tips and tricks and show you all the products that I love. So we'll start again by clipping our hair. I also want to start by saying what type of skin I have because I think that's really important when you watch any type of review or makeup video and you're trying to get recommendations. I think it's important to know what type of skin that the person has so you can kind of gauge accordingly if it's a product that you might like. So for me, I definitely have more dehydrated skin like all the time because I live in the driest climate ever. So I am constantly battling dehydration in my skin every day. All of my skincare is always geared towards hydration. So first thing in the morning when I get up, I always rinse my face with water. I don't cleanse with a cleanser because I already cleansed the night before. My skin's already dehydrated. So really, I'm just kind of getting off the top layer of skincare that I applied the night before um, and allowing some of my natural oils to stay on my face to really just maintain the hydration as much as possible. So I rinse my face with water and as soon as I dry it with the towel, if you're someone that has dehydrated skin, you know that feeling when you dry your face, you instantly feel it tightening as it dries more and more. I dry my face with the towel and before I can have that tightening effect on my face when it still feels just the tiniest bit moist, I go in with my skincare right away. And that's a really great tip if you have really dry skin. Don't let your skin get to that point where it's drying out right, off, right out of the shower or right after you wash your face, because same goes for the skin on your body. As soon as you get out of the shower, lotion your body if you have a really dehydrated body skin, and that will really help lock in the moisture that's already on your skin. I immediately go in with... All of my skincare is Holy Grail, 100%. I've tried so much skincare. I'm very picky with my skincare. Um, it needs to have a certain texture, it needs to be a certain way, it needs to make my skin look a certain way. So if I'm using it religiously, then I can guarantee you it's a good product. First, go on with the Laneige Cream Skin Toner and Moisturizer. So it's really going to soften your skin before you apply your other skincare, which means it's really going to help absorb all of your other skincare so much more. When I don't use this, I feel like my skincare is sitting on top of my skin. But when I do use this, I can feel my skincare really absorb. And so what I do with this is I just take it and it's very liquidy. I just pour a bit into my hand, rub my hands together, and we just press it. Next, I go on with the Cosser X Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. Essence helps the skin to lose less moisture while keeping the skin smooth and healthy. And this product does also help with hyperpigmentation, lightening it over time. And I do have a bit on my cheeks that I'm always trying to lighten. I'm allergic to vitamin C topically, unfortunately, which would have been my alternative type of product to use for that. But since I'm not able to, this product has really helped kind of lighten my hyperpigmentation a bit um, and it gives you that glass skin look. The last product in my morning skincare routine is going to be sunscreen, the most important skincare ingredient. If there's only one skincare product you can use in the morning, let it be sunscreen. 
This one is from Good Molecules. This is their Sheer Mineral Sunscreen SPF 30. I'm very picky about the sunscreens that I use because, again, I need it to work well underneath my makeup. Um, so this one has been so awesome. Before I used this one, I was using the Dr. Dennis Gross one. I also really love that one. That one is about $45, whereas this one's $12. So I find this one just works really beautifully. Um, and it is a physical sunscreen. If you have more sensitive skin, a physical sunscreen is going to be great for you. And what I like about this sunscreen is that for being a physical, it does not leave a white cast on the face. And I just want to point out, make sure you're using a hefty amount of sunscreen underneath your makeup. Even if you don't spend a lot of time outside, it is still important to use sunscreen. I'm taking another dollop. It's still important to use sunscreen if you're under fluorescent lighting, if you're near a window. We get exposure from UV a lot more than you would think. So it's important to use enough to get the full effects. So for instance, just having a sunscreen in your foundation is not enough protection because you're not applying enough foundation to get the amount of um, SPF that you need to fully protect your skin. And of course, don't forget your neck. This is a product that I've been using for years and years and years and years. And I don't want to say I was doing it before everyone else. But I was kind of doing it for everyone else. I remember the first day that I used this on my eyebrows. I had just run out of my brow gel. And I was like frantically looking around for something to put in my eyebrows. And I was like, maybe I'll try this. And it was amazing. And I haven't stopped using it since. And now everyone's jumped on the trend, which I'm glad because it's the best. So I just take a little bit on my hand right here, just a little dollop. And then I take my brow pencil that has a little spoolie on the end and I just take a small amount, that much. And I just start brushing her through. Just take a small amount at a time. I have told people about this and they're like, I ended up with like a white residue. You shouldn't have a white residue. That's never happened to me so make sure that you are taking a small amount and I'm really brushing it through and then now that this side has kind of dried a bit while I did that side I go and I press it down And then you can, they're still a little bit malleable, so you can kind of like move it around a little bit more if you need to. And that's how we're looking for brows. And then we will come back and finish the brows after we get our base on. So one of my foundations that I've been loving lately, I do normally have a few different foundations that I love. And I kind of rotate between them depending on depending on what type of coverage I'm in the mood for. This one's going to be more of a medium coverage. All of my foundations will have a dewy finish. I don't use matte foundation, so. <laughs> this one is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I love this foundation. It gives such a great coverage, but looks really natural and just sits on the skin so beautifully. And at this point, we've let our skincare kind of sit in for a few minutes while we have done our brows. So we're about ready to go in with this. This is a little bit um, more tan than my face, but my body is a little bit more tan. I usually just let my face be pale. So I just take a couple pumps. And with this foundation, it's important to note that I prefer applying it with my hands. I will go in with a sponge and kind of work it in after but this foundation in my opinion is best applied with fingers it just works the product in in a way that a tool can't in my opinion not every foundation is applied best with the same type of tool i think it really just depends on the product you're using 
And for this one, hands is best. So I kind of just go through and get a nice layer. So once I get that light layer everywhere, I go in with my, I mean, technically this is the Real Technique sponge, which I prefer so much more over a beauty blender because it has the flat side. Yes, my sponge is dirty, but it's because I use the same sponge for my foundation, my contour, my blush, everything. So it's going to look dirty. It's just the way it is. Next, we will go on with our concealer. I have been obsessed with the MAC Studio Fix Concealer. This is the 24-hour Smooth Wear Concealer. It's really nice and light. Doesn't look too heavy on the skin. I can't stand a super dry, heavy concealer. I like coverage, but I do not like it to be super dry and heavy. That is just... Ugh. I can't stand it. I can't stand the way it makes my skin look. I'm too dehydrated for that. Let me just apply it in all the areas. And this has more of a like medium coverage concealer in my opinion. So I will usually apply it and let it sit for a minute. I'm kind of dry down a bit and you can really get that full coverage out of it. Okay, so I've let it sit for a minute and dry down a bit. So I'm gonna just start blending, going with my same sponge. And we're just going to blend her out. And it just sits so perfectly on my skin. And I do use my concealer on my lids for my primer. Next, we're going to go in with our cream contour. I've been loving the Rare Beauty bronzer stick. This one's in the shade Always Sunny. It's definitely a warmer kind of medium tone bronzer, but I do love a warm bronzer stick just to kind of give that nice sun-kissed glow to the skin. And so I just start section by section so I don't stripe it all on my face at once. I go one section at a time, just because I do find that this product can dry down a little bit if you let it sit for a moment and it kind of becomes a bit harder to blend. I just go through and when I apply this on my cheek, I do go a bit above my natural hollow of my cheek right there. That when I went, that way when I blend it out, it goes into that hollow and a bit above, but it doesn't go too far below that hollow of my cheek because we don't want it to drag the face down. We want it to give a nice lift and contour. And then for my nose contour, I learned I really just can't be too specific with it because it is just a struggle for me. So I just take the side of the stick and just draw it down the sides. And then I take my fingers both at the same time and I just rub them, rub them in. And I feel like that kind of gives the perfect little blending tool having both fingers at the same time. That way it kind of keeps it even. And then I just kind of do a bit down here with what's left over on my fingers. And then I just rub this part so we kind of get that contour here to give you kind of your button nose. And then I take my beauty blender and just kind of tap that 
in the last place I use my contour stick is around my lips. Yeah. Something that I've been doing lately that's new to me. I've always been back and forth about blush. For years and years, I didn't wear blush at all. I just didn't like how it looked on me. Then I kind of started getting more into blush, but I still felt like when I looked in the mirror, it just was too much. Like it gave me, I just felt very 80s, you know, like just, it was too much, even when I would just use a little bit. So I started using cream blush before I set my face with powder and it just gives that color from within effect. It just makes you look youthful and glowy and I just love it. And I have quite a few cream blushes, but the one that I found that I really love how the color looks is the Huda Beauty um, Cheeky Tint Blush Stick. And this one is in the shade Rebel Red. It looks like this. It's very um, warm, so definitely more of a orangey red. How I apply this is I take the stick and I rub it on my hand like this. So you can kind of see the color better here as well. And then I take my same sponge, get a bit on that flat side, and I just go straight in. And I start here higher on the cheek, again, to give that lift to the face, and then kind of take the remnants and down onto the apple of my cheek. Everyone's placement for their blush is going to be different based on their face shape. I definitely have more of kind of like a heart-shaped, rectangle-shaped face. I think it's kind of a mixture of two. So for me, because I do have kind of bigger cheeks, this placement works best. Not everyone's going to want to put blush on the apple of their cheek. Some people look a lot better with their blush just up here higher. Um... But for me and my face shape, having some on the apple of my cheek really complements my face shape, in my opinion. And then I take what's left over and do a bit on my nose. I'm going to take the side of my sponge that I use for my concealer. And first of all, kind of blend out any creases I've gotten underneath my eyes from moving around. And also blend that color so there's no harsh line now we're going on this is one of my holy grail that i will always use always 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 this is the makeup forever ultra hd micro finishing loose powder this i don't use all over my face i just use it in areas where i have pores where i have enlarged pores and this one i do use a regular beauty blender with it just because I find the texture of the Beauty Blender works really well with this powder. Um, and I just start pressing it. And I'm using the smallest amount. A little goes a long way with this powder. You don't need a lot. I just press it where I have more enlarged pores. And I go up under my eyes as well. Because it's just going to help set any little under eye fine lines and then i do also put it here on my forehead and for the rest of my face i'm going to be using the rare beauty setting powder and this is in the shade light it still has a little bit of a luminosity to it so it doesn't make my skin look too horribly dry and I just use this powder brush from Sephora. I've had it for so long. I want to say, oh yeah, it's a number 55. And I just press. I always press. I don't swipe because that's going to set everything underneath and not swipe it away. And I'm going to take my brush and also set my eyelids. And I always drag it out. To make sure that this um, outer portion of my eye is also set. So that when I apply my um, eyeshadow, it's going to really go on and blend really seamlessly. Okay, so let's go back to eyebrows and finish those before we move on to eyes. So 
my holy girl eyebrow pencil is the benefit precisely my brow in number six and this one's gonna have the really nice fine tip on it and this one i prefer over to gift proof which is the one with the slanted tip this one i like more because you can just get so much more precision with it hence the name um the angled tip is good if you kind of just want to like throw something in your brows and you already have a good shape and you just need to fill in sparse areas but if for me like i'm drawing on a tail here because my tails just are lacking and then so now that i have those tails on i just go to the front part of my brow and i just kind of underline here where i do have hair but i just want to have a good base of where we're gonna do our little strokes so we have our shape down now we're gonna go on with my other holy grail brow product this is the Urban Decay Brow Blade. This one normally does have your little um, precision brow pencil on the other side, but I just ran out of that side. You can see it has this really, really fine pin on the end. My pen side is still going strong. These things last forever. You get so much in here. So this is probably my favorite brow pen because of how much product is in there. It just lasts forever. So um, I just go in, I do start on my tails here because I've filled in the shape, but I have natural hairs here and here you can see, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's just pencil, you can kind of tell. So I'm going to take my pen and just do little hairs so that all blends together better. And then just fill any little sparse areas when i get to the front here i like to i kind of map out with my pencil how far out i want to take my brow so you can see i went a little bit further here so i take my pen and always use your pinky to anchor onto your face so you can get more stability and i'll just do some Okay, so moving on to eyes. This is a palette I've been using every day. It's just like the perfect everyday palette. Perfect for traveling. This is the MAC Times 9 palette. This one is the semi-sweet. And sorry that these products aren't perfectly clean, but like these are actual products that I use every day. So I use this product almost every day. I use these top three mostly, and then that brown that's in the middle here and then the black this is gonna be just an everyday eye look i always 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 if i'm just doing my everyday do i guess you would call it a halo eye or a spotlight eye just because it complements my eye shape the best so i'm gonna take this shade first this middle kind of peachy neutral and i'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and we're just going to put this right in the crease with MAC eyeshadows, they might look more natural colored in the pot, but when you apply them, the pigment is just so amazing. So I really love that about these eyeshadows. And so we just got a light wash with our little fluffy brush here. I kind of flick it out at the ends, and this is why it's important to make sure your whole eye area is set out until um, your kind of hairline here. Because when we apply the shadow, you want it to really be able to seamlessly blend out into that. Next, I'm going to take a longer bristled kind of crease brush here. This one's also from the Morphe Jaclyn Hill collection. So anything similar will totally work. And I'm going to go in with this kind of mustard color right here. I love this color. I love like grungy colors like this. I feel like they're so hard to find. And I just go more directly into my crease at this point. And again, look how much color payoff we're getting from this shade. Like it looks really light in the pan, but you really get a really pretty color from it. And 
And then I'm just going to go back in with the previous brush we used and blend this edge. So we got that going on. I'm going to take the same brush that I just used and we're going to go in with our deeper brown shade, the shade right in the middle with our same brush. I'm going to start on this outer corner and we're just going to fluffer. We're doing little circular motions. And now if you don't want to do the halo eye or spotlight eye, you can just do this area and you'll get more of that typical eyeshadow shape that will generally work on all eye shapes. Keep the path. And you can see I'm taking this just below where our other shades end. That way you're still seeing those shades beneath. But we're getting a nice dimension going on the eyes. So you can stop there with that shade. I like to do a bit of shading. I'm going to take a really small blending brush. Like this is tiny. You can see how small it is. And I'm just taking that same brown shade and I'm just placing a bit of that right on my inner crease of my eye. So you can see there. I'm going to take this shade here. It's kind of like this bone shade. And I'm just going to use my finger and put that right in the middle. of my eyelid. And I generally really like to use my finger for my lid shade, whether it's a matte or a shimmer. Just feel like you can really pack on color easily with your finger. And then I'll just take a like regular eyeshadow brush and kind of get that edge a bit better. I always apply eyeshadow underneath my eyes to really pull my look together. My deepest shade here. And I'm taking more of a pencil brush for this. And we're just going to apply her right down here. To take the first brush we use, that fluffy brush, and blend the edge. I don't always start with more product on there. I'll kind of just take what's left over. So now I'm going to do some liner. I'm a winged liner girl, whether it's in style or not. I just love a winged liner and I feel like it, I just need it. I need the intensity of it. You know what I mean? So this is the MAC Brush Black Brush Stroke 24 Hour Liner. And this one's going to have your brush tip. Some liquid liners are brush tip. Some liquid liners are felt tip. This one is a brush, which I really like because it's more flexible generally. Generally, the brush tips are more flexible than a... Um, felt tip. A felt tip can be a bit more firm. This one is extremely flexible, so it goes on so smoothly like butter. This is probably my favorite liquid liner pen I've ever owned, and I've tried pretty much every brow, pretty much every liner pen from every like brand at Sephora. So I'm gonna go in and just do a And I always start with this line first, and then I drag from this outer corner down to the middle of my eye. I don't go all the way across like that. 
because again for my eye shape i find that it looks best when i accentuate the outside of my eye and then the inside corner of my eye i don't like there to be a lot in this middle portion because that just makes my eyes look more round and we want to give them a bit more of that almond shape so we're going to accentuate the outside corner and then we're also going to do the inside so really not applying much product there in the middle and getting more of this shape on the corners and you can see that really just elongates my eye and gives that really nice almond shape okay this is another one of my favorite tips that i do every day and it is so great if you're if you struggle to do a winged liner if it always looks messy throw on your liner it can be even messier than mine is now but just kind of have your basic shape then i'm going to take a angled brush and i'm going to use my black shadow from my palette and we're gonna first of all i like to do this because it gives a really nice matte finish to your wing but then we're also going to use this to smooth any jagged edges on our liner and this also just kind of gives that smoky sultry look to our liner it just makes it look a lot more elevated and you can see there i'm back on black liner and my bottom waterline it's just what i'm liking right now the mac color excess glider dye gel pencil is just the absolute best it draws on so creamy but then it um is very waterproof so i'm going to apply a bit of that in my waterline i don't go all the way to my inner corner a because my eyes get watery and i do find that this can kind of bleed a bit into my inner corner if i apply too much of it in that like tear duct area and we're really just trying once again to accentuate either the outer or the inner corners of my eyes so just applying it on this outer portion kind of gives you more of that cat eye effect i'm gonna curl my lashes the shiseido eyelash curler is just the goat it's the best i've had this same eyelash curler for years and Sephora does sell the replacement pads on their website. They're two for $6, I believe. And you can just keep replacing the pad in this. I love, this is a little mini size, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury push-up lashes. I love this mascara for my top lashes. Because you can see, it has it's flat on one side and then you have your little comb on the other side so i take that flat side first and so we're not even really using any comb on our lashes for this part we're using the flat side to kind of apply the mascara onto the lashes so you can get a good amount on there and mind you i wear falsies every day so top mascara i don't go too crazy with it because we're really just trying to get that color these are the eyler number 126 lashes these are probably my favorite drugstore lashes that i found i am very particular on my lashes and what type of shape i like it has to be a cat eye shape we can't do the open eye because again already have round eyes we're not trying to accentuate the roundness and so i always take these and i always trim them a lot of times you'll have that little kind of knobby part on the front we're gonna trim that off so it doesn't stab us and then from the end i'm gonna 
trim to I took off this much. You can see. And so we're left with yay big. So it's not going to completely go across my entire lash line. And to glue these on, we're going to use my tried and true duo. As you can see, it's been well loved. This is just the clear that has the little wand. I'm sorry, but the duo glue that comes in the tube, like a squeeze tube, the worst. The actual worst. Now, this mascara is the GOAT. This is the mascara for my bottom lashes. I cannot use anything else for my bottom lashes. This is the MAC Extended Plate Giga Black Lash. She's a staple. She's been around for a while. This is the best because every mascara, doesn't matter if it's waterproof or how well it claims to wear or not flake, every mascara rubs off on my cheeks under my eyes. It's just the way it is, except for this one. There's a few mascaras that I can use and they all have to have this type of formula that they don't claim that this is a tubing mascara, but it's essentially a tubing mascara. It does not come off. And the thing I found with a lot of tubing mascaras though, is that they stay on well, but they don't do much for my lashes. And this, I feel like I get really good. And I love this brush. Look, look how thin this brush is. I'm using my OG Benefit Hula. You can't go wrong. And I've been going back to using my fan brush for contour. Who remembers these days? And I kind of just go in and reinforce the areas that we added contour. A most recent everyday lip combo. I did not think that this was a color that I was going to end up liking every day, but I think mixed with my lip liner, it just brings the perfect color to my lips. So this is a new product from MAC. This one's the Locked Kiss Ink 24-hour um, lip color. This one's in the shade Mullet Over and Over. It's very orangey, which is not something that I typically gravitate toward, but... So this is like a liquid lipstick. But I like these even more than like the traditional liquid lipsticks that MAC has or any other brand that I've tried has. Because it's really thin in texture. And so it's going to dry it on matte and you're going to get all those same effects of a liquid lipstick. But it's so thin it doesn't make my lips feel dry. It doesn't get cracky throughout the day. It just is perfect. And then for lip liner, you can tell this is my lot well-loved lip liner. This is the Makeup Forever um, Anywhere Caffeine, number 600. The best brown lip liner, in my opinion. It looks like this. It's just... It's just the perfect brown. It's not too warm. And I line under my lip. And then I come to the sides here. And then I fill in the corners. Just blended it all down. And I do the middle of the top, the sides. It just adds like a really nice punch of color that I didn't think. I wanted or needed in my life, but I don't know. I always wear it and I'm just like, what do I like about my makeup so much today? And it's always that. Sometimes I'll add my MAC lip gloss, just the clear, which is in my opinion, the best clear lip gloss in the world because it just gives your lips the most insane shine and totally has a blurring effect. Okay. And then for highlight, we're going to use, this is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder in the light catcher formula. 
This one's in Celestial Light. And so this is called a setting powder, but I can assure you, you probably don't want to use this all over your face. You see. It's a little bit more soft than your traditional highlighter. So I just take a good amount of this on my highlighting brush. And I really use it kind of all over my cheeks here. And it almost provides a little bit more coverage and gives you just the most natural glow. Sometimes I accidentally put too much like that and it's fine because it's really soft. And it just gives you that like lit from within effect to your skin. I just think it's gorgeous. And this will literally last you a lifetime because you get so much in here and you're only using a very small amount. So I'm gonna do, this is the Benefit Tara blush. I would show you, but unfortunately she is broken. She came to me broken, but we're really not gonna use a lot of this anyway. I'm just gonna take the tiniest little bit. And I've been liking putting a little bit of blush up here and then down on my chin. And then whatever's left over, just a teeny bit. On your thing together. And there we are. Okay, maybe I'll do a little bit of this gloss so you can just see how it looks. And I don't do it all over my lips. I just do a little bit here in the middle. But that is it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm so glad we were able to kind of sit down and talk about all of my favorite products. As I do generally use a lot of these products when I do my other types of videos, but this way we're able to kind of talk through everything, how I like to use it, why I like it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do want to keep sprinkling in some of these makeup focus videos like this. So if there's any products you want me to try or anything, let me know. Otherwise, I do have my breakups and makeup videos that I've been doing as well. If you haven't seen them, we basically just talk about some really insane stories while we do our makeup. So definitely check those out. Give this video a like if you did so I know to continue to do content like this. And leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And if you're not subscribed, I hope you do so we can keep doing this. But I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you on my next video. Bye!